Hi everyone, we're delighted to be part of Cyberfest 6 and celebrating Beer 52's birthday. Um, I guess quite a lot of you won't have heard of us and won't know who Utopian are. We're kind of the Accrington Stanley of uh, the brewing industry. But hopefully we can change that tonight. We're going to give you a bit of history about the brewery, where we've come from. Uh, and most importantly, the team are going to take you around a full brew day, show you the brew house, walk you through the whole process of how we make our lovely lagers. But nobody wants to do that without a drink in the hand or without an empty glass. So this is the beer we're going to be going through today, our uh, Utopian Unfiltered Lager. So um, all the team are here to say thanks for coming and uh, to say cheers. Hi, hello again. So I'm Richard and uh, I said I'd give you a little bit of history because we're the new kids on the block and I guess many of you don't really know terribly much about us. So we moved into this facility here. We took it on about two and a half years ago. It was uh, formerly a Swede processing plant. So uh, there was quite a lot of mud and rubbish about, which uh, we cleaned out first. Then we insulated the whole building, painted it lovely white. Uh, we put this mezzanine structure in, then uh, we put the rather beautiful hexagon tiled floor down. That all pretty much took us to the end of 2018. So the brew kit started to arrive in January and we uh, had a hectic six week program of installing the 35 hectolitre brew house and our fermentation and conditioning tanks so that we were ready to brew and got commissioned on the 25th of February. Uh, and then four weeks later, our first brew of Utopian British Lager went out into trade. So that was a really exciting day for us. So I get a lot of people ask me where the name Utopian comes from, because it's quite a bold statement in some ways. Um, and it actually comes from this guy. Now with his beard, it might look like an early 1800s craft brewer, but this is actually a guy called William Morris. And lots of people will know William Morris as a fabric designer or wallpaper designer. But there was much more to Morris than that. And he was a really, really interesting character. He was an author and philosopher. He was also very much a pioneer and a driving force behind the arts and crafts movement of the 1800s. Arts and crafts was interesting in lots of ways. It was one of the forerunners of recycle and reuse. But it was also in many ways a pushback against a lot of the industrial revolution of those 1800s. Now Morris himself wasn't against mechanization per se, but he believed wholeheartedly that machines shouldn't just replace people, they should enhance the job of the worker, they should help the artisan create great things. And that's exactly what we believe in in the brewery. So we have a semi-automotive brew house, but we have the skill of the brewer that knows when and how much and how to actually use those machines to make the products. All right, so here we have our mash tun and our grist case up there, which delivers, delivers our malt in through the top of the mash tun, mixed in with our, um, with our hot water here, um, which is very, finely controlled for temperature and it will be hydrated sprayed into the mash tun and the mash tun will be filled up and we have this mixer continually mixing um, and we have a really nice steam jacketed vessel to allow us to do those um, finely controlled temperature steps so this appetizing stuff is called mash um, this is just a mixture of our milled grain and our lovely soft Devon water. So what's going to happen inside here is the starch in the grain is going to get converted to lovely fermentable sugar. And at the end of the mash, we're going to start separating off the, that sweet sugary liquid called wort um, from the bottom of our vessel. Uh, and that will go on to become beer. So this process is what we call the boil of the work. And right now we are just finishing our runoff coming from the mash tun into the kettle. Uh, and this process serves primarily two functions. So one of which is to sterilize the work 
in order to uh, make it very safe for transferring into the fermenter. And the other one is the utilization of hops. So depending on um, when, at which stage of the boil, we're going to add the hops, we're going to get either more bitterness or more aroma from them. Uh, we're going to have three additional hops, one at 60 minutes, one at 30 and one at 10, uh, from which we're going to use very traditional British hops, which are going to be Fuggles, uh, Iskan Goldings and our uh, first gold. Uh, and those are going to serve as the purpose of adding bitterness for the 60 minute edition and uh, the one at 30 and the one at 10. We're looking for more of a aroma and spiciness and earthy flavor that are going to add to the crispiness and, you know, the experience of drinking a lager made with only British ingredients. The beer that we're drinking today, unfiltered British lager, is a great example of this. It's uh, brewed in the Bavarian style of Helles, which is a light, delicate, straw-colored lager. Um, it has a low hop profile, and in this beer we're using East Kent Goldings and Fuggles, which gives it a slight spicy aroma, um, but very subtle. Let's dive into the beer. Delicious. There's a saying in beer, the brewer makes the wort, but yeast makes the beer. The biggest difference between lager brewing and ale brewing is the yeast we use to ferment the beer. In lager brewing, we are using lager yeast, which thrives in cold temperatures. So during the next eight to 10 days, the lager yeast is going to consume the sugars that we released from the barley during malting and it's going to produce alcohol and CO2. So at the end of our eight to 10 day fermentation, we end up with a near finished product. So this is now beer. It has CO2, so it's carbonated. Uh, it tastes like beer and it has alcohol in it, but it's not quite finished yet. At this point, the green beer is ready to be transferred into one of our lagering tanks. So here we are in our lager cellar. So we have a number of tanks here where the beer is put to sleep. So after the eight to 10 day fermentation, we transfer the green beer into one of these tanks, cool it down to close to freezing temperatures, and we let it sit for two to three weeks. This is a tank of our lager uh, currently unfiltered with about a week left uh, in its maturation process. So let's see what that tastes like. Looks like beer. As you can see, the, a lot of the yeast has settled out of suspension now. Um, and we're looking a lot more like a real pint of beer that you'd buy in the pub even though this still has another week to go. And the aroma has just started to clean out a bit. It's becoming smoother. The taste is more refined, a bit more smooth, uh, and really easy drinking. So after our month in tank, uh, so once this beer is spent another week in tank, the only process left, the only thing left to do is to package it and to ship it out to you. Beautiful. So that's just about it from us. Uh, we'd really like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, we've really enjoyed doing this. We uh, really hope you've enjoyed finding a little bit more out about our brew house and how we brew our lovely lagers. Um, like a big thank you to Beer52 for including us in, in Cyberfest and a really big uh, happy birthday to everyone at Beer52. Cheers. Cheers.